With the new XFL starting to gain huge traction and looks like things could actually work out this time, I want to take a deep rewind and head back to the 1970s. Before the original XFL tried to compete with the NFL, there was a hockey league that sort of had the same idea. And the plan to bring hockey to markets the NHL has either forgotten about or to places that have strived for hockey. The league needed to make a few moves in order to compete with the big league, and believe it or not, they were actually able to do so. Sort of. Thus causing a seven year battle between the two leagues. Let's go back and relive the WHA. The WHA, or World Hockey Association, wanted to capitalize on three main things. One, they wanted to first bring hockey back to areas that were either forgotten or lacked hockey in general. Two, they want to attract higher talent and create their own. And by doing so, they would pay more money than the NHL would for those players. And finally, the WHA would try and compete with the NHL. One of the big ways of doing so was by doing something the NHL had yet to do at the time. Attract European players, giving them a chance to play the sport. The WHA was created by the same people who founded the ABA the American Basketball Association who competed against the NBA as well. So it could make sense as to why these guys would create the WHA as well. They wanted to popularize the game in areas where the game wasn't played. But in order to get their name out there, they needed to play smart. And that they did. Sort of. The WHA originally started with 12 teams once the league was announced in 1971. They would be placed in places such as Miami and Winnipeg, markets where you would never expect the hockey team to be located. This overall went well, but for others, it caused relocation or folding issues. For example, two of the original 12 teams, the Dayton Arrows and San Francisco Sharks, had to relocate and become the Quebec Nordiques and the Houston Arrows before any play began. Other franchises such as the Calgary Broncos and Screaming Eagles straight up folded, being replaced with a Philadelphia team and a Cleveland team the Blazers and Crusaders. Although this would spark some early concern as teams are already suffering from financial issues, the WHA would play on and the league would start in 1972 and spend even more money trying to make a name for themselves. For the first time, hockey players find out that they have real value the WHA would change the way the game was played. Back in 1972, all major sports leagues would use something called the Reserve Clause, and this clause would automatically sign a player to a one-year deal once their contract expired, thus tying them to that team for life. Well, the WHA would announce that they would not be using the Reserve Clause, and that they would promise higher salaries than the NHL offered. This would lure over NHL players and convince them to want to play in the new league. Stars such as Derek Sanderson, J.C. Tremblay, and Bernie Perrant would be only some of the 67 former NHLers that would transfer into the league in its first year of existence. The biggest signing that helped the WHA become a big name, however, was the signing of Chicago Blackhawks superstar Bobby Hull. Hull was seriously considering signing in the WHA and joked he'd only signed for $1 million. Keep in mind that at the time, the NHL salary cap went to only $25,000. Well, the Winnipeg Jets actually took him up on that offer and signed Hull to a 10-year, $2.7 million deal, which would make him the highest paid athlete of sports at the time. Hull attracted fans from all over and made the WHA seem legit. Eventually, as time rolled on, hockey legend Gordie Howe and his two sons would lace up and play for the Houston Arrows. However, throwing around all this money at players was a risky move and it was already causing some problems. The first Ofco World Championship game would feature the New England Whalers and the Winnipeg Jets. The Whalers would end up winning the cup, but to their surprise, the league had yet to have the trophy completed, so the Whalers would skate around hoisting their divisional championship trophy. That's just embarrassing. Little did anybody know or predict that that exact moment would signify how the rest of the league would eventually pan out. Eventually, teams were having trouble paying off their player salaries as they were using the same tactics the Jets successfully pulled off. A prime example is the Philadelphia Blazers signing Derek Sanderson to a $2.6 million deal which would make him the highest paid athlete in the world, and it wouldn't pan out one bit. It was a constant bidding war between WHA teams to get the most talent from the NHL, and it caused teams to have some serious financial issues. After one year of the Sanderson contract, the Blazers had to buy it out due to struggling to pay their players. This would become a common trend, and those financial issues would cause more and more teams to fold left and right. For a league that at one point had 18 teams, was down to just the seven headed into the 78-79 season, and it was clear that teams were on the verge of a financial collapse. The WHA would start to discuss a potential merger in the 1977 season, but the NHL was not too keen on it at first. There will never be a merger. Merger is a term, it is a substantive term, that the National Hockey League will never engage in a merger. 
They would try again the following year, as this time Houston wasn't included in the talks, so the franchise opted to fold on July 6th. Meanwhile, while all this happened behind closed doors, the WHA would still play on, and a new group of talent would emerge that would eventually help revolutionize the NHL headed into the 1980s. Young guys such as Mark Messier and Mike Gartner made their WHA debuts that season. And, oh, so did the man by the name of Wayne Gretzky. No biggie, though. In the WHA's final season, six teams remained. The Oilers, Whalers, Jets, Nordiques, Stingers, and Bulls. Unable to meet payrolls and stuck in a financial hole, the two leagues finally agreed in the merger deal in 1979 that would send four out of the six teams into the NHL. The Oilers, Waivers, Jets, and Nordiques would be awarded NHL franchises, and the Stingers and Bulls were each paid $1.5 million each in compensation. The NHL would refuse to acknowledge any WHA records and treated the merger as an expansion. And with that, the WHA had officially come to an end. Although the WHA collapsed and is no longer around, it actually helped revolutionize the game of hockey and helped change the NHL into what it is today. As mentioned before, the WHA scouted and signed players from Europe. After the success of WHA players Ulf Nilsson and Anders Hedberg, the NHL would eventually allow European players to be signed and drafted into the league. The WHA also made sure that the Canadian teams got to merge into the NHL, and this is because at the time, the only two Canadian franchises were the Habs and Leafs, and this gave hockey to more people in Canada, providing a wider variety and teams to choose from. Also, in a way, by refusing to use a reserve clause, it helped the NHL establish the free agent market, giving players more freedom and would allow them to sign and play for other franchises. The WHA also helped institute sudden death overtime to break ties and provided talents like the ones previously mentioned. Without the merger, the NHL's great one could have been a completely different person. Certain things happen for a reason, and what's actually interesting is that the establishers of the WHA were also able to complete a merger deal with the NBA with their ABA League. So you could argue that they ended up with some success after all. The WHA was different. It provided hockey to different markets and tried to be unique in their own ways. I mean, look at these outfits the referees would wear on the ice. They even experimented with blue pucks at one point. The WHA will forever be remembered in hockey history as it helped create the NHL we know of today. In order to compete with the big leagues, you need to come out swinging, and the league did just that. And all it took was one massive signing by one organization in 1972 to change the entire course of hockey history.